Hi guys, welcome to the channel, Practical Reefer. Um, very, very busy lately, so getting there slowly. Um, lots going on. I got myself a new phone, stroke camera. It's the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. I've had it for a while, but the SIM card's finally in it and I'm actually using it day to day now. Um, and I'll also be using it for all my filming as well. So hopefully some improvements come in there. I need to play about with settings, but um, it's pretty easy to use. Big thing I'm going to be doing now is obviously the Reefer XL200. Um, good practice is actually to change the O-rings. Um, this is a second-hand tank, so with any second-hand tank, it's probably good practice. Before you set it up, fill it with water and rock and all your expensive livestock is to change the O-rings. Um, so I'm going to go through that today. It's something I've not done before. I've not even watched a video on it yet, but I think it should be pretty simple. Um, so we'll quickly go through um, removing the, the pipe work. Now, I did start filming this one night and it just wasn't bright enough to do it without setting up lights and stuff. That is much, much better. Um, so very easily, let me just come back out a second. We've got the mines is filled with stuff. Your ATO will not have a jump guard or a heater sitting in it. So I'll just take that out and get rid of the ATO. I've already deconstructed the skimmer a little bit so the head's not in the way. So very simply, um, if you've got any reefer, whether it be a 170 or an XL200 or something bigger, you'll probably have a very, very similar setup. Now, all the reefers will just have a nut there to get some done. And then there's an O-ring that's actually keeping it as a, a sort of push fit or a force fit. Um, an interference fit as some might call it and again they just come off and it's actually the o-ring that's just giving it a, a tight fit there as it's sitting in excuse the noise and then the last one for the return all the same now i've had these off recently um, obviously I, I rebuilt this i had it out in the garage and i'd obviously did a test fill and cleaned it with citric acid which you've seen before and that is as simple as that. You just undo those nuts and pull off the, uh, the bottom bits of pipe work. Um, I'll chuck these on the floor. And you'll see, I'm not, oh, actually, let me just put that on here. Let's go. Excuse the hell of noise. I've actually kept the uh, return pump attached. And there we go. Um, that is my, all my return pipe work. So we'll quickly, we'll get the pipes and the, the weir removed, excuse the angle. We'll get the pipes from the weir removed and we'll get those laid out and then we'll start changing all the O-rings as well. So guys, actually just coming back to the pipe work um, before we do the O-rings. To remove the weir pipe work, uh, we'll take that lid off there. And we'll also just remove part of the overflow. Um, that just literally lifts off out of place. Now, what I'd probably do, which I'd probably do with two hands, is you can remove this piece here. Um, there's a nut at the back of the return nozzle there. And there's a nut, I'll just show you there. There's also a nut at the top of the return nozzle, so there's an elbow. And if you unscrew that, that will lift out. And then these two clips here just clip, you just grab these in, I can't quite do it because I'm reaching over quite far and I need two hands to do it, but that will lift out and then you'll have your other pipes there. So to remove these you actually want to be going underneath um, to the, the sump area. Let me just move that around. Now what you actually want to do rather than grabbing the pipes from the top is start at the bottom. So take a hold of the pipe at the bottom there and start to turn um, anti-clockwise, or sorry, it will actually feel like it's clockwise um, from the bottom. It's odd, it's very odd. So if I was underneath and looking up at this, it would be going clockwise. So what you do is you do that, and there we go, that's loose. However, it's still catching the threads on the bottom. So it's, it's loose, but it's sitting there. Same with this one, you actually want to be going clockwise. If it was from above, it would be anti-clockwise, but it's just a, it's a backward thread. Same on that one. And then again, turn it clockwise. It can be quite taut. And there we go. So the three of those are loose there. However, um, coming back to the top of the tank, we can see now they're all loose. What you'll actually find, I'm going to get myself a step ladder, two seconds. 
short people struggles um so here we go and now i'm kind of blocking all that light so what you find is that the pipe works there but it's loose and it can't come out so what you actually need to do is pull it up until it's tall and again now you're actually turning it anti-clockwise now that you're above it and what you find without rattling off things so the first time you were unscrewing this top thread and then the bottom thread was catching so we just very gently finger it's only finger tight it's literally a case of lifting it up till the threads engage and then just turning it anti-clockwise and then the bottom thread just comes free as well and then lastly is the return again pull it up until the threads catch the threads at the bottom of the base and again it's that bottom thread that you're just undoing there and there we go are our three pipes and going back to the cleaning citrus citric acid is that's how my wear box looks so pretty happy with that um, and that is our three pipes off we'll get the o-rings off those and we'll get those changed just now so guys here's a uh, i'll just zoom in slightly um i've got the red sea reefer o-ring kit um which if you're interested is oh zoom zoom um r42187 to be honest if you google red sea reefer and then the model of your tank a uh, o-ring kit You'll find it but i would just check to be honest i think the the kit they do for all reefers is the same um from understanding because i can see right now that those three white o-rings match the three on the down pipes um i need three of the slightly larger red ones and there's four of them i don't believe i need either of these two o-rings and the very small one i will need for the return um elbow so I'm I'm a few a few o rings extra, so I, I I get the impression that it's just a one kit fits all. Um what I'll be using um is I've got a little PC repair kit and it's these tiny little screwdrivers you get. Um excuse my hand. So it's a little I'm gonna use a little flat screwdriver. Um if you've ever had a mortgage with Halifax in the last decade, you've probably got one of these which has the same screwdrivers in it as well. It's these little uh little screwdrivers here um same idea probably the only best reason i'll have that is going to be the most awkward one is going to be this one on the main drain with the the valve on it might change that in future but that's for another day um that's going to be a little bit awkward to get out of there so what i'll just do is i'll um i'll film it i'll time lapse it if there's any issues um i'll i'll stop it and i'll chat through it but it's just probably going to be a case of leveraging off the, the o-rings, putting the new ones on, and then we should be good to go. So guys, that was surprisingly easy. Um, it took me all of a couple of minutes there to do them. Once you kind of got into it, it was quite easy. All well, the thing I would say is to kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like something um, something else that you would put on, but you just kind of roll the O-ring over so you're not twisting it. Um, kind of equally roll it down and over the sides. Um, I've left the most awkward one to last, um, just to let you see what I'm doing, but also give you an idea. The other one's a bit easier, but Again, with this one, I'm probably actually just going to have to stab the o-ring a little bit um, to get under it. Here's hoping to get it back on. And I mean, they are a bit sticky as well, a bit tacky. Um, obviously, they've, this, these have been in use for about 18 months. I don't know if I said earlier, but um, obviously this tank's in about 18 months use. These o-rings cost about six, seven pounds. You might be a little bit of delivery, depending on where they're coming from. Um, and that one's just popped right into place. Um, perfect, nice and easy. Wasn't that difficult? Absolutely recommend my little friend here, which is the little stabby screwdriver. Excuse the focus. Um, it's just the smallest flathead screwdriver you'll get out of like a PC repair toolkit or most kind of home um, little multi-purpose tool sets. They're just kind of small little screwdrivers. But that has absolutely done the job and uh, obviously with this kit I've been left with two sort of fairly small red o-rings um, and a larger one which 
um, I don't need for my kit, but it's basically the same kit you'll get from all of them. And I'll bin the rest because they've been either stabbed or scratched with this. So they're absolutely no use to anyone and I wouldn't use them again anyway. I'll just buy a fresh set if I needed them for six, seven pounds. They're very, very little. But we'll get these pipes refitted and hopefully in a few weeks the tank will have water in it. So I'll show you the pipes going back on and we'll have a look. So guys, that's the pipes being dropped in from the top. Um, the bottom thread was threaded through and then the top thread was loosely tightened and then I got underneath there and tightened them from the bottom and reattached all the pipes. Now the last two bits to go in is part of the overflow. So as I said before, water actually flows underneath this grey pipe, which then sits on top of your main drain. And what happens is water comes underneath that grey pipe, flows up through the centre of the pipe and then actually enters the top of the main drain. Um, probably the, not the best explanation but it, it obviously allows for a silent and continuous uh, overflow. Now the last bit to go in, what I couldn't show you earlier was these two little clips. Now you just grab them with thumb and, thumb and forefinger or whatever two fingers you like really and that just lifts out. Now the threaded barb, which we replaced the o-ring on just earlier, that pushes in to the top of the return and screws back on. It doesn't need to be particularly tight. And then we'll just pop back in the return nozzle. Now that will, it's got a bit of flex in that top pipe so that can be pushed out the way slightly. And then the larger nut can be screwed onto the back of the return nozzles. And I have someone who may uh, print me some um, random flow generators, so I might pop those on. I do quite like the dual, dual outlet, but I might do an RFG, we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll play about with that. But I hope you guys found the, the video useful at least. If you're ever going to change your O-rings or you're ever changing the pipe work, this might be useful for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the videos and hopefully it was useful. And don't forget to give me a little like and subscribe and any tips below feel free to pass them to myself. Um, I'm still learning but hopefully that's been useful for people and I'll catch you all next time.